In our first story, scores of squatters were on Wednesday rendered homeless after their structures were demolished by the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. Mm. Well, the over 50 structures the AMA deemed illegal were cleared to pave way for dredging of the Odor drain. The affected residents have meanwhile accused the city authorities of failing to give them enough notice. But head of the AMA task force, Chief Okine, says the structures have been impeding the dredging of the storm drain. Scores of squatters looked on helplessly as officials of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly task force pulled down their structures amidst heavy security. The few belongings salvaged before the exercise is all that is left for many of these residents here at Odona in Accra. The rest, including wooden structures, were set ablaze as earth-moving equipment cleared the debris. Some residents count their loss to join us. In this afternoon about 12.30, we saw MEA people coming here to come and demolish here, whereby we didn't give anybody notice. notice. So we begged the government to stop that movement. We, we are all not one. Hands are not equal. So it's, it's shameful for this government to do that. But you would, you would agree with me that um, this place is illegal. The reason why they are doing this is yeah, yeah, that they claim yeah, 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 you are yeah, squatting. They have already, they have already been here when they, when they raised force here, about a year ago. It's illegal. But they, they didn't give us any affordable houses to go inside. So there's no need for them. They have to give us notice so that my brothers or sisters live here. We are we did not like you to here to stay here again. How were you affected by today's exercise? I'm not satisfied with this exercise. The apprised possession destroyed by the tax force is not the only dilemma facing many of these quarters. Where to lay their heads tonight is their greatest concern now. Many of those affected claim these structures have been their homes for years and would be compelled to sleep in the open till they raise money to rebuild another structure, even if it is an illegal one. I, I, I lost a lot, but I cannot talk. They, 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 burnt, they, they burnt my whole store uh, with my three canopies. The canopy one, I bought it seven million. I get this game where they play the football, they can't bend that one to all. And we are citizens, sometimes we have right to talk. Eh? You, know we say, eh, you know we say, you know we say, my man, we are all from, we, we are, we are, you know we are the born as well. We are all from a sort of places where we come. You get me? Don't treat us like that. You get me? Cause, so, so what do you want now? What do you want? You know something? The only thing I can advise the government now for him to understand be say we are in an election year. And when there is an election year, no demolition. We are living in a, we are, we are living we are living in a country we are living in a country whilst 80% are living in poverty 80% we are living in poverty so sometimes you see the government the government you know, always they think about the government affairs but I don't think about we the citizens citizens Head of AMA Tax Force, Chief Okan, put up a strong defense for their exercise. According to him, the rains would be setting in soon, and they need to dread the other drain, which is more than half filled with salt. Structures has been put here, and they are blocking the machines from working and dredging the drain. So we are here to do so I will move all the structures so the machine has access to do the dredging. Because these areas are left for machine to distribute here, then the tower truck cut them away. So, how many structures were cleared in this exercise? Well, so far, about 50 on both sides. 
about 50 structures. Um, the complaint many of these people are saying was that they weren't notified about this clearing. Though if they are, they are squatters, they are here illegally, um, they thought that they deserved some notification. Um, what do you say to this? No, they are aware. Because last Friday I was here. We just do the work to make sure they live on their own. Today we came, they are still here. That's why we are removing them. The AMA may have succeeded in clearing these illegal structures, but one thing you can be certain of is these quarters would return soon. Reporting for Joy News, my name is Kwetenati. We have to turn our attention to politics. And this time, the flag bearer of the new patriotic party, Nanado Dankwe Kufado, has fiercely criticized President John Dramani Mahama for his appointments since he took office. And Nanado says majority of the president's appointments are not based on merit, saying it is a reason incompetence has been the hallmark of the Mahama administration. Nanado Dankwe Kufado was speaking at the launch of the NPP's fundraising platforms here in Accra. Ghana today is in crisis. Agriculture, once upon a time the bedrock of our development, is a pale shadow of its former self. Manufacturing is at a very low ebb. Corruption is at its height. Our economy is in tatters. Inflation is high, taxes are high, businesses, both big and small, are struggling, and millions of young men and women are out of work. Incompetence is the hallmark of the Mahama government. Government appointments are not based on merit, but on considerations which are not only puzzling, but also bizarre. Our healthcare system is in shambles with the collapse of the National Health Insurance Scheme. The cost of education continues to be a big challenge for too many families. Young people who have toiled to obtain qualifications are having great difficulty in finding jobs. And there are hundreds of thousands of Ghanaian children who are not getting the kind of education that they need to compete in the 21st century. Ghana is in trouble. There is a need for change in the way in which this country is governed. A change that will make way for a competent, honest, hard-working, well-qualified team to take over the affairs of this country and steer it in the direction of prosperity for all. Instead of the current state of affairs, which dwells on prosperity for the friends and family of the people in power. What excites me is that in spite of all the difficulties, the Ghanaian people have hope. They have hope for a brighter future. They have hope because they believe change is coming. And party supporters will have the opportunity to help the MPP raise cash either by buying scratch cards through uh, the SMS system and also via the internet. Uh, after the program, join news Kwacha Friendriama caught up with National Chairman of the MPP, Freddie Blay, and asked him, among other things, how the party intended to raise these funds. This is a new method we've adopted. We are bringing the party funding to the ordinary people. That over time is being money bags that 
claim that they support this party. The ordinary people want to contribute. They are desirous of ensuring that our party comes to power. In that case, they must contribute their window might towards bringing the party. We've lowered it, we've given them the opportunity, we've made it possible for people who can contribute as low as a CD. I think it's the most appropriate method of bringing a party. And, and I'm wondering what happens to the one that was launched earlier, the mppcenter.com, the one that was launched in Well, he said that there are various uh, platforms which you can contribute. The earlier one that was launched was not with the blessing of National Executive Committee. This is the National Executive Committee's backed fundraising platforms. And we expect all Ghanaians here and abroad, I'm saying Ghanaians here and abroad, to contribute towards it through, only through this platform that I'm, we I'm created. wondering how much the party is expecting to make through this. We can't, we can't determine. But we expect if you have support, if people are desirous of the party coming to power, they will make their contribution. You have a figure in mind, you think? We don't have a figure, but we have as many as about 5 million supporters in this country. If they want to contribute, each given 1 million, one city a day or a week, also you can imagine. Do your calculations. <laughs> Okay, so the scratch cards will be on sale, and please make sure you buy them if you love the MPP and you want the party to raise enough funds to uh, come to power. And also the SMS platforms will be available, or you can also make sure, as always, you try to download the app for, um, for Nana. And you just have to go to Play Store. If you're using iPhone, um, the iOS system, you make sure you get to the proper platforms and do the downloads. Mm. Moving on, though. Tackling unemployment among the youth in the country has been a challenge for successive governments. Well, many technocrats and industry players have also suggested ways of resolving the current unemployment situation. The latest is the Vice Chancellor of the Regional Maritime University, Professor Elvis Nyako, who is proposing that government considers investing in the training of seamen as a way out. On the sidelines of a ceremony to sign an MOU between the Regional Maritime University and the Dredging International Services Nigeria to train students of the marine engineering sector of the university in marine dredging techniques, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Elvis Nyako, proposed ways to help reduce unemployment in Ghana. He says government needs to focus on training seamen to help reduce unemployment in the country. If you want to reduce unemployment, in your country and you have a sea coast then you should train the seafarer you should train the seaman because when you train a seaman and he goes to sea a seaman may spend sometimes six months 12 months even 36 months averagely you know a, a class 3 officer which is the, the very beginning will take about eight thousand dollars a month a chief engineer on board the deck will be taking about twelve thousand fifty thousand dollars a month a salary whilst he's at sea he doesn't spend his money so when he returns after that long period all that money is available to him as capital that means he can set up business and he can employ a lot more people so if you want to reduce unemployment what you should where you should be looking at is to be focusing on training more seafarers the human resource manager of the dredging international services africa kenneth collins explains the importance of the training for the students for this program, uh, we establish training for the instructors. Why do we want to do this for the instructors? Because dredging, uh, it's more than sailing alone. Uh, it's maneuvering, it's very high-tech environment, so they need additional support and training. Report by George Yosin, Vine, for Joy News. Inflation rates increased marginally to 19.2% in the month of March, uh, having moved up from... 18.5% in February. The Statistical Service announced this on Wednesday, citing transportation and utility costs as the main drivers. There's more in this business desk report. Transport recorded the highest inflation rate of 40% in March, followed by housing, water, electricity, gas and other fuels with 39.6%. Inflation was lowest in the communications subgroup. 
Government statistician Philomena Nyako spoke with Joy Business. In, if you remember very well, in February 2016, there were increases in transport fares of 15%. So this may be um, affecting the prices that we are seeing, the inflation rates that we are seeing. Transport fares, the increase, that's the, the major. So far, because the, the uh, CD was stable, if you look at the price of imported items, it moved from 18.3% to to 18.4 percent so the CD was quite stable so it has nothing to do with the exchange rate so it's just uh, the uh, transport yeah, that is uh, maybe causing the inflation. She added that the Apple trend in inflation may continue at least into April mainly because of the rebound in crude oil prices expected to affect transportation fares. If you remember very well in February 2016 there were increases in transport fares of 15 percent. So this may be um, affecting the prices that we are seeing, the inflation rates that we are seeing. Transport fares, the increase, that's the, the major. So far, because the, the uh, CD was stable, if you look at the price of imported items, it moved from 18.3 percent to to 18.4 percent so the CD was quite stable so it has nothing to do with the exchange rate so it's just uh, the uh, transport yeah, that is uh, maybe causing the inflation so are we to expect this trend to continue because there has been some increases as well in this month the next one that we are what kind of increases are we seeing this month um, I'm talking about petroleum well, and as you, because once, you know, once we, uh, we touch the petroleum products, it will translate into high transport fares, and that will also translate into high prices of items that have to be transported. So definitely we will see it reflected, unless there are other policies that will bring down or dampen the effect. At the regional level, Inflation rates range from 14.0% in the Upper East Region to 22.9% in the Greater Accra Region, which in addition to Ashanti recorded rates above the national average. Okay, okay so now we have to look at uh, some messages from you. Mm, okay, this one says, Good morning to you, Roland and Mama Vishio. Ghanaians may have hope, but not in Nanado who cannot manage the intra-conflict in the party he leads. Kindly include your name when you send us uh, messages. This one says, uh, okay, let's uh, see other messages right here. Good morning, Mama V and Roland. TB Joshua first Thursday is here. I am already afraid because Upper East here, all the borders are the easiest entry point of invaders. Stephen Awene from Garo Tempani. Uh, and I think that that's what the leadership of the country doesn't want. Uh, don't be afraid. Just live your life and let the security agencies do their job. I think it's good that you sent this message. Yeah, today is the first Thursday. Mm. You said he met terrorists. Is that what he said? No, he didn't say that. What did he say? We'll come back with the headlines and then we can share a lot more of your messages. We'll also look at uh, a few of the news portals. You're watching the AM show. Oh, just come by AM News.